Welcome back, friends. <laughs> this is my favorite time of year. Ah, oh, I love the colors of fall, the vibrant shades, the golden glow of the afternoons. And if that doesn't work for you, how about stuffing your face on Thanksgiving? <laughs> and if the waistline gets a little tight, just remember, pants are always optional at bottomless brunch at Coleman's. There are so many reasons I love this special season. And this year, there's so much to be grateful for. Am I right? Today, I'm having Friendsgiving brunch with some very special, special friends. They are dear to my heart. And I'm gonna make an exceptional cocktail that's just bursting with fall flavors. Okay? All right, let's go. Let's go and have a good time. Welcome back. Okay, let's welcome to my Friendsgiving brunch. First up, she's a New York Times bestselling author, an award-winning journalist, a co-host on The Talk, a judge on Project Runway, and she was the youngest editor-in-chief at a Condé Nast publication. Just judging from that resume, you can tell she's a very lazy human being. Please welcome the mogul, the great, the beautiful, Elaine Welteroth. <laughs> <sighs> Hello, Elaine. How You're are you? Making a brown love? girl blush right now, Coleman. <laughs> you know that? That was my intention, my love. That was my intention. Let's see if I can do that for my next guest. She is a talented actor who jumps off the screen and lands firmly into your heart. You know her from How to Get Away with Murder, The Birth of a Nation. You even know her from The Upside. She is my extraordinary friend, dear sister, beautiful, beautiful cover girl. Asia Naomi King. Hello, sis. Thank Welcome. You. Hello, my love. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Did I make you blush? <laughs> you always make me feel special, just being in your presence. Now, I want to start off by talking about when I first met these lovely ladies, okay? Elaine, how do we meet? We still don't know <laughs> we really the don't true know. story. And that's the best part of our friendship is we don't even know how this whole thing started, except I do remember meeting you on the dance floor at the Selma premiere, yes. but not really meeting you. I remember dancing, dancing. with, like you around like some body language. We were yeah. just vibing. And then years later, we find ourselves, we find ourselves- At a brunch. At brunch at Soho House. And we're deep, like hours into this conversation. And then we realize, wait a minute, I was like, wait, Selma premiere in New York years ago. Wait, dance floor, was that you? Oh my God, that, that's where we met. Exactly. Now, Asia, what about you? How did we meet? At a bar. <laughs> <laughs> did you? If we, did, we really if did. We did, we met at a bar. That sounds so crazy was, though, yeah. We met at a bar. Um, I was going to Yale at the time. And then it was, it was still some time. We reconnected in New York. I think through Kelly McCreary, probably. That's exactly uh, it, exactly, <laughs> yes. Right, as one does <laughs> in New York, yes. And then we've been inseparable ever since. Yes. Well, welcome. I was hoping that last year would be the only not quite normal Thanksgiving. Sadly, this year we're not 100% there yet, but we're making the best out of a situation. We're gonna chat a little bit more, but first, I think it's time to make a cocktail. All right, I sent you everything you need to make our cocktail. I hope you got it all. And it's always great to have a glass of water standing by because I want you to stay hydrated, okay? Yeah. Right? Perfect. <laughs> Keep it classy. So since we're celebrating Thanksgiving, I thought I'd make a, a little something that captures the spirit of this time of year, okay? I'm going to make a Crown Royal Cinnamon Apple. How's that sound? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, good, good. I, that oohs and ahs are good for this cocktail. Good. Okay, for you at home, this is what you're going to need. You're gonna need your Crown Royal Deluxe. Look at that. Make sure you got them. I wanna make sure it arrived there. Perfect. Oh, good. You even got yours still in the bag. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of cinnamon simple syrup, and you're gonna have three quarters of an ounce of apple cider. Ooh. Make sure you got that. Perfect. A splash of lemon juice. And you guys are wonderful models. I love that. Let's model it, you guys, model it. Yes, that's right, serve it up. You're gonna need three slices of an apple. Serve it up, Elaine, give me that apple. All right, there we go. And then six mint leaves. 
You got your mint leaves, my loves? Here we go. Mmm. <laughs> this is what's called a cocktail shaker, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna open that baby up, and we're gonna muddle the apple slices and mint leaves together. So we're gonna okay. slice that apple, get me three slices of that baby, okay? Maybe about a quarter of an inch each. How about that? Three slices. How you want it to look? Hey, I like that, you know, these three slices right there. Like, there we go. <laughs> Let me see your slices. Oh, that's is... gorgeous. Those are three gorgeous slices. Put those slices in there and then give me six leaves from the mint. Six mint leaves. One, oh. two, three, like the count. Four, <laughs> five, six, <laughs> six <laughs> mint leaves. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Now let's muddle. This is your muddler. Muddling is just basically crushing it. Crush it all together, just crush. Take out any anxiety, any trauma, anything you Ooh. want, Asia. There we go, you muddled? Yes, Lord. Now let's find some joy by moving to the next step. We're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of the apple cider, okay? So I sent you a measuring tool too. Basically grab your measuring tool and put three quarters of an ounce in that baby. Right now, let's pour that right in there into that glass. Good. <laughs> Reminds me of like apple picking. That is so right for this time of year. It's so right. right. Right? Let's add three quarters of an ounce of cinnamon simple syrup, you guys. Grab your cinnamon simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of that. I love how meticulous you are, Elaine. It's beautiful. We're gonna add a splash of lemon juice. So just cut your lemon in half. Okay. And then I just want you to give a little squeeze, just a little gentle squeeze. Because we said a splash, so just a little gentle squeeze in there. Now here's when we're gonna pull out the big guns, okay? We're gonna add one and a half ounces of Crown Royal Deluxe, all right? This is where we get down to business. Okay. Now if you turn it over, this is actually one and a half ounces. So just one and a half. Ooh. Mm, that smells good. <laughs> I'm like the worst cocktail uh, date you're, you're on your show because I feel like I can't focus on anything but the one task at hand. I'm like, you're killing it. I love how your focus is great. It should be applauded. Okay, great. <laughs> now we're gonna add ice. This is this is it. We're getting close, you guys. Add ice. You got your ice in there. Now mm. put the lid on this baby. Okay, put it on nice and tight. And we're gonna shake it. Give it a nice shake. This is shaking joy. Hey, there we go, good, perfect, great. That's it, oh, one-handed, there we go, hey! <laughs> perfect. Finish that off, now you want you to open this baby up. And you can sometimes just hit it on the side sometimes if it gets a little tight. Take the whole thing off. <laughs> Fill your glass with ice. Okay. And today we're gonna to do something that I have never done on this show. We're gonna double strain. I got you two strainers. I got you a julep and a mesh, okay? That other one's the julep. We, this one, okay, That's okay, it. okay. perfect. And then you have the other strainer, yes. Are you ready to strain this baby? You got that julep in there, put that in there, right? Because you wanna make sure it's gonna hold all the things that we muddled, okay? Now you're gonna put the uh, mesh right on top of the cocktail, and you're gonna strain it. Watch me, look at that. You just want all that delicious flavor and no bits. Perfect, now I want you to garnish this baby with three more uh, slices of apple, and then put your little toothpick through it, okay? Oh! Right, because you wanna make sure that it's garnished beautifully. You gotta make sure when you serve your cocktail that it's a whole event. And then you're gonna add a mint sprig right there, right at the head. Okay, with this cocktail, you ended up with a wonderful combination of flavors. Just from the Crown Royal Deluxe alone, you're getting hints of oak and the flavor of vanilla. This smells so good. Today, Crown Royal believes that it's not what you have, it's what you give and how you give it. And that, my friends, is why we're celebrating Friendsgiving with this legendary whiskey. And you can find the recipe for the Crown Royal Cinnamon Apple on amc.com slash brunch. And remember to always drink responsibly. Oh my gosh, you guys, please, I would like to toast you because I love you. And it's so good to have dear friends in my life. Thank you. Happy Friendsgiving. Happy Friendsgiving. I 
love you both. <laughs> Enjoy. Ooh. Ooh, this is good. Oh, wow. Okay, you guys ready to get your Friendsgiving brunch on? I'm ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, Asia, what did you whip up for brunch? Okay, prepare yourself. Okay. I have here breakfast tacos. Oh, oh yes. Check that out, yes. So we have some delicious, spicy pulled pork with some yes. sauteed sweet peppers. Some oh. some tenderly cooked duck egg, <laughs> some pickled onion, a little bit of cilantro, and a little bit of salt on a, get this, a freshly homemade tortilla. What? Okay, you just showing Wait, out, Asia. what? You were really Hello. showing out. That's, just, that's not even right. Now, to that's be real, real. that's how you brunch at your house. Dan did all of this. This okay, is let me all tell you my something. husband. Every, everybody needs a Dan in their life, because Dan kills it. Yes. Elaine? What did you throw down for? Well, like my friend Asia, cooking's not really my thing. Um, I have other strengths, I'd like to think, but I did um, have something prepared. Oh. Here it is. It's, a, it's a crepe dish. That's I, I'm trying to show you without dumping it all out, because <laughs> that's something I would do. Can you guys Ooh. see? Wow. Yes. Wow. Some fresh figs, some, some mixed berries. Oh my God. Wow. Oh, and that's all I got. That's all I that's got for intense. you. But it's gorgeous. It's Gorgina. That looks so beautiful. It's beautiful. Now, you guys, I wasn't messing around because I knew this was Friendsgiving. So I, I went old school and made myself a delicious, mouth-watering, tryptophan-laden turkey sandwich with cranberry sauce. I made oh. this. Mm. Uh. I present this to you on sourdough bread uh, with some Dijon mustard. Monterey Jack cheese, roasted turkey, mm. cranberry oh. sauce, and lots and lots of Irish butter. And yes. now, it's mine. Oh. Voila. Bon appetit, you guys. Enjoy your brunch. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. OK, oh that God. looks amazing. Oh Did God. I mention he sous vide the pork for over 24 hours? Oh That's rude. my God, that's amazing. <laughs> no, it's rude, that's what it is. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my God. Mm. You two are always so busy creating and working. I wanna know, where do you draw inspiration for your creative soul? And I'll ask that question to Elaine because she just put food in her mouth. <laughs> How are you gonna do that to me? <laughs> this is hard for me, actually. Actually, Asia, you take it. Okay. I need to step in right. and think. Asia, <laughs> Asia, go for it. Asia, how do you feed um, your creative soul? How I feed my creative soul? I really look to my friends. I, I am so nourished by the people in my life, and I love observing their art and their hearts, and mm. that is what makes me feel so special and so grateful to even be a part of this field where we get to create so much and play and, and discover the nuances of, of what it is to be a human being and exist. That is so beautiful, Asia. That was nothing but a word, as they say. Elaine, I wanna tell everyone that they should read your book more than enough. It's about race, identity, and your incredible journey. Can you tell me about the moment when you realized that you were indeed more than enough? I don't think there was a moment, Coleman. I don't think there was a singular moment. I think, um, I do think that enoughness is something that is a universal struggle. It wasn't until I started kind of really meditating on this concept of enoughness and, and how black women are so often told that we are not enough, not, you know, not, not, not smart enough, not sophisticated enough. And then when we reach a certain point, then we're told we're too much. We're too confident. We're too loud. We're too proud. We're too black. And so I just, I was like, you know what? That, that was sort of the birth of more than enough. Just identifying like you are more than enough. You were born enough. You were, you know, that's, that's sort of the thing that I reached for. And I wanted to share that with other women 
who can relate to that. Elaine, I'm drawing a line, and you're part of this line of women like Maya Angelou and like Toni Morrison, like Zora Neale Hurston. Mm. You're, part of a, you're part of a great line, and I just want to recognize you for that, and I thank you for that, for being used in service, especially for community and other women. Thank you. Yes. Mm. I second thank that. You, yes. Thank you. Asia, a few years ago, you gave this incredibly brave and inspiring speech at the Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards. Why was it important for you to share that message about self-doubt and overcoming it? At the time, I was getting a lot of attention. I was getting a lot of um, magazine covers and all these, all these really wonderful things were happening for me. And there was something inside of me that was shrinking from it, like, no, 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 mm. not me, like, mm, you know, and I, like, this anxiety was, like, created inside of myself where I didn't feel worthy, and and it took me a while to unearth that it was, it was my critic, mm. having that, having that voice just so ever-present, and I realized, like, I realized that I am listening so intently to that critic that I'm I'm ignoring my own true voice and I had to say no it's okay I can be great like much much to everything that you and Elaine are both saying already about just believing that I am enough and walking that path I'm going to strive to allow myself to shine yes. and like and let that be okay and more than okay yes. to like, to savor it, to soak in it, have my moment, however brief or large it might be, to just allow. And, mm. and a part of allowing is letting go of control, letting go of doubts, letting go of the critic, and mm -hmm. just being you. Come on now, that's wonderful. Woo! Yes, come on, y'all better be praising. Elaine, you had a meteoric career in the magazine industry. Let's talk about it. Ebony, Glamour, being the editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue. Take me back to the moment when Harriet Cole calls you and offers you a job at Ebony. Oh, man. I remember that like it was yesterday. Oh, you got to tell so me. You got to tell me. This was a pivotal moment. Um, that completely changed the trajectory of my life and my career. And I will forever be indebted to my mentor, my fairy godmother, Harriet Cole, who I full on stalked. Uh, I found her on the internet, I read her bio, I saw what she was able to do with her career. She was a multi-hyphenate before that was even a thing. She, she went from being in this really esteemed magazine editor to you know, creating this incredible intersection for herself um, in this media space in a way that no other black woman had done before. And I just incessantly reached out to her. I remember at inviting myself to the office in New York City, and I was living in California at the time, I was a college student about to graduate. And I was so desperate to meet her that I offered to bring her coffee to New York through her assistant. Her assistant was like, excuse me? She was like, you live in, but don't you live in California? And I said, yeah, it's no big deal, no no, no big deal. I'll, and she was like, please do not get on a plane and fly here to New York City to bring coffee. Like, I was, <laughs> she was just like, please don't. Um, but it got her attention and it, she was like, okay, I will try to find some time on her calendar. Just do not call oh. again and do not fly out here. <laughs> and um, I, there was this really magical opportunity where we got an informational interview set up on the calendar and 15 minutes turned into 45 minutes. And at the end, I said, if there's ever an opportunity to work with you, just please keep me in mind. And then five months later, she calls me back out of nowhere. Long story short, said to me that she's looking for a new assistant and she has a shoot in California and remembered me and wanted to know if I'd come down and do the shoot for $250 for the day. And I was like, girl, I'm in my head. I was like, I will pay you $250 to let me come shadow you, you know? And and so I, I went down to Malibu and I pulled up at this shoot. She did not tell me it was a cover shoot with Serena Williams. And I was like, what? oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, is this really happening? Oh, this is crazy. And at the end of that shoot, she pulled me to the side and she basically offered me an internship 
in New York City to work under her on all things fashion, beauty, and cover related at Ebony Magazine. I owe her That's so beautiful. much. And I feel like I gotta pay it forward now, like truthfully. I'm yeah. like, dang. Yes. Elaine, by the way, we made this fabulous cocktail today in honor of Thanksgiving. And keeping with the Thanksgiving spirit, how has generosity been a driving factor in your life? Generosity is everything. I mean, I've been the, the beneficiary of incredible acts of generosity. And I feel even you, Coleman, like connecting the two of us. I mean, that's, that's a lot of people in this business and other businesses just want to keep, they want to collect their friends and keep their friends to themselves, you know? Your generosity of spirit is, oh, it's like this beautiful aura that walks in the room, every room that you enter with you. I feel like I've amassed such an incredible group of friends and colleagues, and I want people to know them the way I know them. Elaine, Asia, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your friendship. This has been such a special show for me. I treasure both of you, and I am grateful we have this Friendsgiving together. Thank you so much, and cheers. Cheers. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs>I know we all get busy with our lives and our families, and sometimes our friends and our friendships take a back seat. I know, but friends are so very important. You know who you are. You know exactly who you are out there, who I'm talking to. These friends can help us find purpose and meaning. A good friend is that person that you can always call up and just babble on and on and on about whatever, about all your stuff and vice versa. Yeah, friendship, it takes work and it takes time, but believe me, it's worth it. Because a good friend will always just bring out the best in us. So, this Thanksgiving, let's make sure to remember those very special friendships, whether they are near or very far away. If you want more conversation with me and Elaine and Asia, I want you to head on over to Bottomless Brunch at Coleman's, the podcast. They're available wherever you get your podcast. okay? Happy Thanksgiving and happy Friendsgiving. Bye-bye.